Hello, everyone. Welcome, and thanks for coming to tonight's program of the Great North American Eclipse. I would like to welcome Michelle Nichols, Director of Public Observing at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago, Illinois. She has worked at the Adler since 1995 and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Physics and Astronomy from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and a Master of Education degree in uh, Curriculum and Instruction from National Lewis University. Ms. Nichols let, leads all of the Adler Planetarium's telescope, observatory, and public sky observing initiatives and events. And um, everyone should have gotten a pair of um, eclipse glasses. So for those who are joining us at home in, at, in uh, Zoom, we will have um, leftovers here at the library. We'll be putting them upstairs at our media desk. So if you would like to stop in at the library to grab a pair, you know where to get them. And, so, and do it soon. Yeah, and do it soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to hand it over to Michelle. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you so much. Hello, hello, hello. And uh, hello, everybody on Zoom. So I can, i waving hi to the camera over here. Um, so we've got an audience here. We've got an audience at home. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm here to give you all the info about the upcoming solar eclipse. This will be our last major solar eclipse uh, in the United States till about the 2040s. There will be other solar eclipses between now and then, but this will be the one, at, especially in our area, where the sun gets covered by the moon the most. Um, and it's, uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a big toss up. Who knows what the weather will be that day? It is April in the Chicago area. It could be 70 degrees out. It could be 20. <laughs> it could be snowing sideways. It could be bright sunshine. We just don't know. Um, but that's kind of the fun of a major celestial event. Sometimes the earth decides to get in the way. So um, so good luck to everybody who wants to go see this. But thank you to everyone for coming out and for tuning in on Zoom. And hopefully this information will help you plan for wherever you decide to be on Monday, April 8th. So you ready to get started? All right, let's get started. Okay, I've got an animation up here. So I'm gonna start the animation, but I'm gonna stop it at one point. So let me get it going here. There we go. So the animation is showing you the moon going around the earth, all right? So I've stopped it just briefly. So that little dot in the middle, that's the earth. That even smaller dot on the outside, that's the moon. What is kind of amazing about this animation is it's to scale. You hardly ever see drawings of the Earth-Moon system to scale, and that's because it's kind of hard to do. The, the Moon is 30 Earth diameters away. So, for example, if you squish the Earth down to a one-foot ball, the Moon would be a three-inch ball 30 feet away. So getting a sense of that scale is kind of important. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about what causes solar eclipses in the first place. So what we've got here is the sun off screen, right? Shining on the earth and the moon. What happens when the sun shines on you? You cast a shadow behind you, you block some of the sunlight. The sun shines on the moon, blocks some of the sunlight, casts a shadow behind it. The sun shines on the earth, blocks some of the sun um, behind it, casts a shadow. So we've got, the moon going around the earth once every 29 and a half days, approximately. And so every time the moon goes around the earth, we see more or less of the lit part of the moon. And we call those moon phases. When the moon gets in between the earth and the sun, that moon phase is called new moon. New moon means no moon. It means you can't see it because the shadowed side of the moon is the side that is facing us at that point. The lit side is the side on the other side, the side that is uh, on, the, on the opposite side, the side we can't see, all right? So when the moon goes around, you would think that we would get a solar eclipse on Earth every single time the moon goes around the Earth. Well, that doesn't happen. And it only happens about twice a year on average. And the reason for that is, as we've got depicted here, the moon's orbit is tilted with respect to the Earth's. And it's about five degrees. It doesn't sound like much, but what that means is as the moon goes around, 
the shadow of the moon misses the earth usually. So usually that shadow passes above the earth or below the earth. Now it can periodically, a couple times a year, line up with the earth. And when that happens, if the shadow falls over the earth, if you are underneath that shadow, you get to see a solar eclipse. So you have to be on the correct side of the earth that happens to be facing the side where the shadow of the moon is falling on you. So not everybody gets to see the solar eclipses. So even when the solar eclipses happen, they could happen twice a year, you may not get to see any of them. You may get to see both of them. Um, it turns out that the, the last two solar eclipses, both of them happen in our area, the one in October and the next one in April. Now, did we get to see the one in October? No. <laughs> No, it was absolutely the entire upper Midwest was clouded out that day, the whole thing. So I, I don't feel quite as bad. <laughs> so, but anyway, we didn't get to see it. So hopefully we have better luck in April. Um, but that is giving you a good sense of why these are relatively rare. Um, you can have as many as five solar eclipses in a year, but that is incredibly rare. That only happens every few hundred years. All right. So now when I show you this image, now you get to see how wildly out of scale this is. But I wanted to point this out for one important reason. First off, sun shines on the moon, moon casts its shadow. If all that doesn't line up, you don't get a solar eclipse. That's what usually happens when that alignment does happen because the moon's orbit wobbles. And when everything all lines up just right, that's when you get the solar eclipse. But if you're lined up for a solar eclipse, it means you're also lined up for a lunar eclipse. So either the full moon before the eclipse, the solar eclipse or the full moon after the solar eclipse, um, you might get to see the lunar eclipse. So there is an associated lunar eclipse with this solar eclipse. I will tell you about it. I will also tell you, do not get excited about this one and you can sleep in and I will tell you why, um, because not all lunar eclipses are made the same. So we'll get to that in a little bit. All right, this is another animation. This was from 20, the 2017 solar eclipse, but this is showing you a, a slightly different perspective where you've got two parts to the moon's shadow. You've also got two parts to the earth's shadow. You've got the darker, smaller inner part, the lighter outer part. So if I keep this animation going, so you can see that darker shadow and that lighter outer one. Now, that darker inner shadow, that's where you need to be to see the moon briefly, cover the sun 100%. We call that totality. And we call that region where you get to see it, the path of totality. It means that shadow, that dark inner shadow, at some point passes over that particular band of, 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 of the earth. Right. And so it's only over that part of the earth briefly. For the last eclipse in 2017, um, the the shadow spot at most was over you for about a little over two minutes. For this next one, the shadow spot is a little bit bigger. The reason is the moon is going to be a little bit closer to the earth. And so the shadow spot will be a little bit bigger, which means the shadow will be over you for a little bit longer. So you're going to have a little over four minutes of what we call totality when the moon 100% covers the sun. All right. But you have to be in that correct region right in there at the right time. And hopefully there are no clouds over you at that point. All right. Now you also might see this, this yellow circle around it. That yellow circle denotes the moon's lighter outer shadow. Notice that does not cover the entire earth. So the moon's shadow, by the time it reaches the earth, is smaller than the earth. So you have to be within the right region to see the solar eclipse at all. So the closer you are to where that dark shadow spot falls, the more of the sun is covered by the moon. The farther you are toward the edges of the shadow, the less of the sun is covered by the moon. If you're outside that shadow region, none of the sun is covered by the moon, okay? So let me keep this playing, there we go. So again, this was the animation from 2017. The path will look 
a little bit different for 2024. It'll go in a slightly different direction, but the shadow does go from west to east. The moon is going around the earth. You are seeing the movement of the moon around the earth. And you can see that with the shadow um, going across the face of the earth. All right. Now this is an animation of the next solar eclipse. So the shadow region encounters the earth in the Pacific Ocean. That red spot is where you get to see the moon briefly cover the sun 100%. It's going to come up through Mexico, through Texas, through Southern Illinois, and go out through the uh, Northeastern United States. Now, this is vastly sped up. Um, it takes a few hours in total for this to happen. Um, but for one particular region, for us, for example, here in the Chicago area, we're going to have a total length of time of the eclipse of about two and a half hours total from start to finish. Um, same thing for the, for the folks down in Southern Illinois who are gonna get to see the, the moon cover the sun at 100%. And they're gonna get to see, like I said, totality at about four minutes in length. And that length of the path of the uh, amount of totality does change depending on where you are. Um, but it's about four minutes in length, close enough, all right? Um, by the way, just for a sense of scale, that shadow spot in 2017 was about 78 miles across. In 2024, that shadow spot is a little over 120 miles in diameter. So you have a little bit more region to be able to get into to get that path of totality. All right. Now, here's where I get to explain the lunar eclipse. And here's where I get to explain not to get too excited about this one. Okay. So first off, what causes a lunar eclipse? Well, a lunar eclipse happens when the moon passes into the shadow cast by the Earth into space. The Earth's shadow has two parts also, darker inner part, lighter outer part. And the two names that of the shadow region you'll, you'll see up on the screen, the lighter outer region is called the penumbra. The darker inner region is called the umbra. So, same root word as the word umbrella, which means to block. And so that's where we get these words from. We use a lot of Latin and Greek in, in science. Um, anyway, if the moon gets into that darkest umbra shadow, that's when you get to see the moon turn that nice brick red color or gray color. We have one of those lunar eclipses coming up in March of 2025. So we have one coming up. We also had one in November of 22. We had one in November of 21. Both of them were clear in Chicago in November. Don't ask me how. I was shocked also. But hey, they were beautiful lunar eclipses. Um, so that's that one in uh, March of 2025. Now, notice I'm stopping it right here where the moon is partly in that dark shadow region. If that happens, if the moon only partly gets into that dark shadow region, we call that a partial lunar eclipse. We have one of those coming up in September. So September 17th is a partial lunar eclipse. Doesn't get totally within that dark inner shadow, just partially. Well, the one coming up in March, I hate to say it, unfortunately, it only gets to the outer lighter shadow. It doesn't go all the way in. So the moon's path doesn't always take it through both parts of the shadow. Sometimes it stays in the, the lighter outer region. Usually it misses the shadow completely. But if it lines up just right, it can go through that lighter outer one. It can go partly into the dark one or fully into the dark one. This one, it's only into the lighter outer shadow. And actually even a little bit of the moon doesn't even make it into the shadow in the first place. So what is this going to look like? And it always interests me when I'm showing this on a screen, if the screen is going to make, if the projector is gonna make this look more impressive than it really is. And that is, yes, this is making this look more impressive than it really will be. It will not even look this dark, all right? So we've got no eclipse for the moon image on the left. We've got a penumbral, a lighter outer shadow lunar eclipse image, the, the maximum of it on the right. And that is probably showing it a little more dark than it will actually turn out to be. 
So when will this be? 11.53 p.m. Central Time, March 24th, to 4.32 a.m. March 25th. So what that means is the moon will start to encounter that lighter outer shadow at a, a little before midnight on March 24th. It will fully, well, as fully as it's going to get, get into that lighter outer shadow at 2.12 in the morning, March 25th, and it will exit that lighter outer shadow on at 4.32 a.m. March 25th. Why am I spending this much time telling you about this? Mainly because you're probably gonna see a bunch of clickbait articles out online that say, oh, this is gonna be great, it's a lunar eclipse, it's awesome, and they're gonna show pictures of the dark red lunar eclipses, and they're gonna show that, for example, and they go, file copy from two years ago or whatever. Yeah, no, this is not one of those. So this is something that I want to tell you to sleep in for. If you happen to be up, great. If you want to try to see it, great. But people who don't even know the lunar eclipse is going to happen, they're going to look at the moon and probably go, oh, there must be a little cloud up there or something. That's it. It's, it's that unimpressive. Um, but it's something that we're seeing a lot more these days, go figure, is clickbait articles to try to get you to read them and get all excited about stuff. Just like uh, I did an interview this morning on a, on a radio station. Um, they initially wanted to talk about, hey, this asteroid that's going to fly past Earth later this week. It's the size of a stadium. I'm like, great. That's okay. That's, uh, do you want me to tell you about the other four or five? They're going to be going past earth this week <laughs> about the same size. So, um, then we went, oh yeah, this happens all the time. And they said, yeah, we saw the article on, uh, online, of course. And you got to click on it. And that was the point. So anyway, that happens a lot in astronomy. All right. But this is why you're all here, right? This is what you want to know about. This is what people travel to go see. This is what gets them excited, is seeing the moon 100% cover the sun. I know a handful of folks here in the crowd are going to totality. Anybody else? You're going also? Oh, where are you going to go? Do you know? Sure. We're between uh, Huron and um, Ohio. Oh, going to Ohio. All right. Anybody else? Texas? Indiana? Indiana? Indiana, Indiana, Indiana. Yep. Are you going? Not sure yet. All right. Watch it on TV. Awesome. Um, well, if you decide to change your mind, there's a whole lot of people, other, uh, other people going. So those of you on Zoom, if there's anybody going, uh, uh, let me know. That'd be great. Um, and I'm looking down at the screen like this camera. No, you're there on that camera right there. So anyway. Um, all right. So we got some folks traveling. That's great. And this is what you want to see, right? You want to see what happens when the bright part of the sun goes away? This is what gets people excited. When you see this, the, some of you have seen this, you instantly understand why people were terrified of this in the past, especially at times when we could not predict solar eclipses, when you had no idea that one was going to happen until it happened, when suddenly the sky goes dark above you and the sun disappears and you don't know if the sun is coming back. And so this is something that it gets you kind of connected to those people from the past. So I've seen a couple of them and yeah, it really can be uh, rather emotional to, to be able to see that. So what are we actually looking at? Well, you see the shadowed side of the moon. So that's the, the, the side of the moon that faces us is the side in shadow. So no, the dark side of the moon is not the far side. Not always. In this particular case, the dark side of the moon is the side facing us at new moon. Um, and then that wispy outer stuff, that is the sun's outer atmosphere. We call it the corona. It got that name a couple hundred years ago. And it was given that name because corona is the Latin word for crown, because that's what it looks like. It looks like a crown around the sun. They didn't really know what it was. They knew Actually, initially, they thought it was part of the moon, but then they realized a little bit later, it's part of the sun. Didn't quite know what it was for, or what it did, um, but we knew that we could only see it during a total solar eclipse. And the reason for that is the corona, the sun's outer atmosphere, is only about as bright as the full moon. You need to block out the bright part of the sun in order to see it. You need to block it out at 100% 
in order to see it. It's always there. If you could turn off the sun, if we could actually see the sun, um, you know, that, that bright thing that we haven't seen for a few days or a few weeks, it seems like, um, the bright part of the sun, even 1% of sun can be too much to be able to see the corona. Conversely, it makes the fact that the corona is only about as bright as the full moon means if you go to totality, the moon completely covers the bright part of the sun, the corona is completely safe to look at. You actually don't want to use solar viewers or solar glasses to look at it. You won't see it. It's not bright enough for the light to get through the plastic in your solar viewers and solar glasses. Um, and also the shape that you see changes from one eclipse to the next because the corona is affected by the sun's magnetic fields and the sun's magnetic field is always changing. So how you saw it in 2017 probably won't look like that in 2024. Don't know exactly what it'll look like. Um, there'll probably be a few predictions that come out a few weeks prior to the eclipse, but we'll see. We'll see what we get on the day of. So we were happening at the same time. Would that be, see, see that? So, so the question is, if there's a solar flare happening at the same time, will you see it? Well, you won't see a solar flare. Um, so a solar, oh, I should, I should get into some of the little bits of the sun, because actually in this picture, you can kind of see part of it. So there are gentle loops that come off the edges. They look like they're coming off the edges of the sun. That's that, that little pink thing right there. That's called a prominence. Again, it's a name that tells you what it looks like. It doesn't tell you what it is. So it's some of the gas from the sun following a magnetic field. So a gentle loop. Now, this looks tiny. The earth could easily fit underneath that loop. There'd be room for the earth and room left over. Um, so this is actually pretty big. Um, so if there are some of those happening during totality, you might see them. You might see them. Um, a solar flare is a burst of energy and you generally wouldn't see that necessarily with the naked eye that's something that you would that we would tend to see coming off the face of the sun the side that's facing us which is going to be blocked by the moon um so and it's also something that happens over the course of several minutes maybe a few hours so it's it's not something you would easily see but those prominences if there are some and there probably will be some would not be surprised if there are some you might see those if they're big enough you might see them with the naked eye okay so the sky goes dark the corona appears you are underneath the moon's shadow at that point off into the distance it looks a little bit lighter toward the horizon. You're looking toward areas outside the shadow. Sorry, outside the darker part of the shadow, um, toward the lighter outer shadow. And so the, the horizon will be a little bit brighter than the sky right above you. You might also see some other objects in the sky. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what other things will be visible in the sky at the same time during totality. So some planets you'll be able to um, keep on the lookout for. Right. And I'm also going to tell you about what will probably sound like a goofy idea, but you may see people doing this to be able to see stuff even a little better. So we'll get to that in a little bit. There have been a few folks who've been able to see this from the top down. So seeing what this shadow looks like from space. And those are astronauts on the International Space Station. So they took this picture in, uh, in 2017. All right. What to expect? All right. For those of you traveling, you're going to have to look up the exact timing for the eclipse for exactly where you're going to go. It's going to depend on where you will be. For those of you staying here, the timing that I've got up on the screen is what to expect approximately within a few seconds or tens of seconds um, for the Chicago area. Anywhere outside the Chicago area, you want to look up the timing, and I'll show you a resource in just a little bit where you can do that. So for our area, 12.51 p.m. or thereabouts, 12.50, 12.51, somewhere in there, the moon is just going to start to peek over the edge of the sun just a tiny bit, all right? Then it will continue to slide across the face of the sun. This will take a little over an hour in total, and then at... About 2.07 p.m., we get coverage at 94%. Do we see the corona here? No. Um, 
is this more than we got in 2017? Yes. So that was at about 87% coverage. So this is actually even a little more. You might notice the sky looking a little bit darker. It won't go completely dark. It won't go as dark as totality. Um, the reason for that is the bright part of the sun, you've still got 5% of it, 6% of it up there, and that's quite a lot. Um, also, your eyes are constantly adjusting to the dark. So the change in darkness, your eyes are adjusting all throughout. So it might be darker than it actually looks, um, but your eyes won't let you see that. One way you could test that is grab your camera. And if you have the ability to set your settings manually and don't change them, set them for bright sunshine scene and keep the settings exactly the same. Don't let your camera auto adjust. Um, there are some, some camera software pro apps that you can do that. And uh, just keep taking pictures every five minutes or so. And when you get around the time of that 94% coverage, hey, look back in your pictures and see how dark actually was it. Was it noticeably darker in your pictures? Try it out, see what happens. Um, all right, then the moon will continue to slide and at 3.22 p.m., the eclipse is over for us here in Chicago. If you are farther to the southwest, the eclipse will start a little earlier. If you're farther to the northeast, the eclipse will start later. And you'll have the time zones to contend with as well. Um, one thing that you can do here even is I want you to enjoy the eclipse. If you've got your solar viewers or solar glasses, great. Every once in a while, maybe after the sun gets covered about 50% or more, look down at your shadow. Because what you're going to notice is as you get closer to that 94% coverage, your shadows are going to get sharper and sharper and sharper. And you're going to, it's not just your shadow, building shadows, tree shadows, car shadows, everybody's. And so that to people looks weird because you don't realize how fuzzy edged your shadows normally are until you see them really sharp. So that is something cool to look for. Definitely try to get a picture or two of that if you can. Those of you going to totality, this is some stuff that you will get to see, hopefully. Um, a, a few seconds prior to totality, maybe about four seconds prior to totality. And this is why you wanna look up your timing to the second. So about four seconds prior, You've got those last little tiny bits of the bright part of the sun shining through some uh, deeper valleys on the edge of the, of the sun. And it's the last bit of light coming through. And you see the, this little string of little, uh, little bright spots along the edge of the sun. And they're, and they're slowly disappearing over the course of that two, three, four seconds. Those are called Bailey's beads. And so if you wanna see those, make sure you know the timing to the actual second and then really get your, get your uh, clock timing to the second. And you can look at it as long as it's within like a couple of seconds prior to totality. Don't, don't stare at the sun any longer than that. Um, but you'll get to see Bailey's beads. It's named for uh, the, the uh, scientist in the 1800s who named, it, named that or was named after him. Then when after totality is done, for the first like one, two, three seconds, you might see a, la a little bit of sunlight shining through a deep valley on the other side of the moon. That's called the diamond ring. Um, and so that's uh, what someone, what some folks will be looking for as well. So give it like one 1002, put the, the solar viewer back on, all right? So don't look at the sun any more than maybe two seconds, two, three seconds tops. Um, there were, there were folks about three dozen folks who experienced eye damage in 2017. They stared at the sun. They absolutely stared at the sun. Don't stare at the sun. <laughs> so, um, we want to make sure everybody ends up with their eyes exactly the same as when they started. All right. This is another phenomenon. I'm playing a video and about halfway through the effect will become more pronounced. So if you don't see anything, don't worry, it'll, it'll show up about a minute or less prior to totality or about up to about a minute or so after totality, want you to put 
I want you to put a sheet down on the ground. By the way, there's audio in this. This was this was filmed um, in 2017, I think 2017. And what you want to look for is, do you see the effect? Looks like rippling on the screen. I'll let it play a little while longer. Actually, I'll turn the audio off there. Whoops. Oops, sorry. There. So you see it? Isn't that cool? So those are called shadow bands. They don't always, you don't always get to see them for an eclipse. And what's happening is a very similar effect as when you see sunlight shining into a pool and you got the water and the, the bands of light that you see on the bottom of the pool. All right. So they get more pronounced the closer to totality you get or really close after totality. So in this case, it's a, it's a sliver of sunlight shining through air, different temperatures and de densities of air. So it's really amazing to see. We saw it in 2017. It was super cool. Um, and then that goes, that goes dark. Um, so I never get tired of hearing people get excited about, about eclipses, but, um, the, uh, the effect may or not, may or may not be visible. So put a sheet down and try to remember at least after totality to take a look, maybe not before totality, you'd be too excited. Um, but see if you can see the, the effect, just put a, a big sheet down, uh, white, preferably just to make it a little easier to see, hold down the corners and give it a try. The shadow bands, they're called shadow bands. You may also hear them referred to as shadow snakes because that's what they look like. All right. So in Illinois, we have the best of both worlds. We've got a really deep partial eclipse, which is cool, but we've also got areas of our state that get to experience totality as well. Even if it's cloudy, it's gonna get dark. So if you're going to totality and you get sucked in by clouds, no matter what, it is going to get dark. It will not be as dark as a pitch black night. It's not that dark. Remember the Corona is about as bright as the full moon. So it's going to be about as bright as a full moon night. So not terribly dark, but still wherever you're going, if they didn't uh, adjust the street lights, <laughs> they may pop on in the middle of totality, which can drive some people up the wall. Um, but uh, the closer you are to the center of that path of totality, the more of the moon shadow, the full diameter of the moon shadow will pass over you. The closer you are to the edges, you've only got a little bit of the moon shadow passing over you. So totality will last for um, a few seconds. All right. Here is where you can go to get your exact timing. I want you to go to timeanddate.com. Timeanddate.com. And there'll be the sun, moon, and space drop-down menu in the middle of the page. Click that, and you'll see in the list, there is a link for the April 8th, 2024 solar eclipse. Or you can put in this entire web link. It's up to you. So either go to timeanddate.com, just that part, sun, moon, and space, drop-down, click, click on the link for April 8th, 2024. And it will bring up uh, this page, I've only got the screenshot at the top of the page, but over on the right-hand side of that page, you can put in your location where you're going to be. Get the, get the town name as close as you possibly can to wherever you're going to be. If you're in the middle of nowhere, just look for the closest small town. Make sure, because their database is really extensive, make sure you pick the town that you're actually next to, because there may be another town in a completely different state with the same name. So make sure you're picking the right town um, that you're not picking uh, some other location accidentally. All right. So yes. Is it in local time? Yes. Yes. The times that it will give in, in timeanddate.com are all local. Yes. So a lot of times you may see websites list things in universal time and that's astronomer time and they don't do that. So local time. Um, for everything that you see. So they take the time zone into account and whether or not they're in daylight saving time or not the whole bit. So, yeah. So put in your search for city or place, and then you'll get to a page that will have information. The first thing you'll see right now, if you go to that, is you'll see the lunar eclipse info. 
So you want to scroll down a little bit farther and see the uh, April 8th, 2024 uh, solar eclipse info. But there will be a map on that page. Click the map and you'll see something like this. You can scroll in, you can zoom in, and you can keep zooming in. And actually, this is even not zoomed in enough. You can pretty much get to the block by block location where you're going to be, and it will show you the timing exactly for within a second or so of where you're going to be. So it's really helpful. Also, it shows you, gives you a sense of where not to be. If anybody has family in Columbus, Ohio, and they go, oh yeah, close enough right here. Yeah, 99%. No, 99% is not 100%. So these folks in the southeastern part of Columbus, they are not going to see totality. It's that close that what they need to do, sorry, I'm trying to get the cursor back. Um, what they need to do is just drive a few miles to get into the path of totality. It really does make a difference. Same thing with Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne, the northwest part of Fort Wayne will not see totality, or at least parts up in that area. They got to go just a few miles to the, to the southeast. Um, I was talking with someone uh, last week who was talking with someone else who lives close to where the path of totality was in 2017 in Illinois. And it was at about 98 or 99% totality in that location. They're like, yeah, I don't know what all the hype was about the eclipse. It was okay. We're like, you were 20 minutes from the path. <laughs> you were about 20 minutes from the impressive part. So 99% is not the impressive part. 100% is the impressive part. So anyway, I didn't do the screenshot of how far in you can zoom, but you can click on this map, get your exact location um, as best you can. All right. Now, what to expect during totality. If it's clear, hope it is, um, there will be several planets visible in the sky. All right. So try to remember to look for them, but if you don't, it's okay. So Jupiter will be visible up into the left of the sun and the moon. Mercury, you might have a tough time seeing it, um, but I will give you a tip on how to do that in just a second. Venus, no problem. Venus, you will absolutely see it uh, as long as it's clear. And then Saturn and Mars over to the lower right. Uh, those two, again, you might have trouble seeing them, but uh, one other thing is there, well, there will be a comet, whether or not it will be visible is something different. It will be there. You probably won't see it with the naked eye. However, I'm here to give you a tip on how to see more detail in the corona and maybe give you a better chance of seeing some of these dimmer planets during totality. You may feel like a goofball doing this, but it really works. All right. And um, that is, I want you to go to a party store or I want you to go to a costume shop or whatever. And I want you to get an eye patch. Doesn't need to be a fancy one. It could just be a plain old ordinary pirate looking eye patch. Right. And about 40 minutes prior to totality, I want you to stick the eye patch over one eye and leave it there. Don't take it off. Okay. And I want you to leave it there, put it over whichever, if you have one eye that's better than the other, put it over the better eye. As soon as totality happens, switch that eye patch over to the other eye. And this eye will have been adjusting to the dark for about 40 minutes. And it takes about 20 to 30 minutes to fully adjust your eyes to any darkness. So the, the four minutes of totality, that is not nearly enough to adjust your eyes to darkness. So you wanna switch that over and you will see more detail. You should see more detail in the corona, more fine detail. You might get a chance to see some of these planets. Now, I know you're thinking to yourself, there is no way I'm gonna be standing there with an eye patch in front of everyone. Well, that's up to you. However, there is historical precedent for this. And that is, have you ever seen a picture of a pirate? They all wear eye patches, right? Were they just, horrible fighters and they all lost an eye in battle? No. So what they would do is they would stick an eye patch on, they swing over to the other ship, and if they're going to attack the ship, they're probably going to have to end up going down into the hold of the ship, down below decks, where it's going to be dark. 
and you do not want to be attacking a dark room because there's going to be all these guys trying to get you and you want to see them. So they would switch the eye patch over to the other eye. That's why pirates wore eye patches, is adjusting an eye to the dark. So if this is the only thing we all learn out of this talk, I'll be okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, so this is just chemistry and physics in action. So if you wanna see the, the totality a little better, give it a try. I'm seriously thinking about doing it. I'm gonna be in front of 14,000 people in the, in the football stadium in Carbondale, but I don't know, why not? Maybe I'll start a trend. Um, all right, everybody will be wishing, man, I wish I had an eye patch. Um, okay, you've all got your solar glasses. Those of you on Zoom, get in here and get your solar glasses soon before they run out because the library does not have an inexhaustible amount. And, uh, but in case you do run out or maybe you lent yours to somebody else, by the way, if anybody has solar glasses left over from 2017, still good. Um, as long as you kept them dry and free from punctures, holes, rips, tears, folds, um, you've kept them safely in an envelope or something like that. The material does not expire as long as it's about the 2017 timeframe or later. So grab anything in the house with a hole in it. Pasta strainer. Okay, all the holes in the pasta strainer act like pinhole projectors to be able to project images of the partially eclipsed sun down onto the ground. Each one of those holes. You're not looking through the holes. This is a projector. It's to project images, not to look through them. You don't want to put a focused image of the sun on your eyeball. Don't do that. Um, you could take an index card and stick a push pin hole in it. That's all you need. All, you, all you're doing is you're lining up the holes with the sun. You're making a straight line between sun, holes, and ground. So you just might need to adjust the angle of that hole, whatever it is, and so you can get your image down onto the ground. Might help to put a white piece of paper or a small sheet or pillowcase or something on the ground just to give you a little brighter screen to be able to see the image a little better. Um, and this is for the, the partial stages of the eclipse. You could just interlace your fingers together and the little spaces in between your fingers act like little pinhole projectors, right? Um, so make a straight line between sun, your fingers, and the ground. And you'll be able to see this. I did this in 2017. It worked. It worked really, really well. Um, you just have to adjust the spacing between your fingers a bit. Um, normally, this is where I would show you pictures of leaves on trees. The, the little holes in the leaves and the spaces between the leaves also act like pinhole projectors, but it will be April. We don't have leaves on the trees in April. <laughs> so this, depending on where you're going, uh, Texas, you might, you might have leaves on the trees in, in Texas, but up here, no. So uh, only a few of us will be able to, to see that. I don't think they've got leaves on the trees yet in April in Southern Illinois. I'll find out. Um, you could use anything with a hole in it. So I have a feeling this person may have just taken maybe a little push pin, cleaned out the crumbs out of the little holes of the cracker here. So anything, anything with a hole um, does not have to be fancy. Um, you could do the, people have done the, the, um, the cereal box pinhole projector. So what you do is you take a cereal box, a full cereal box, and open up the flaps at one end. The other end, you'll close it off like it normally is. Put a white piece of paper on the inside. That'll be your screen. And the side that's open on maybe the left third of the top of the cereal box, I want you to put a piece of foil and a piece of scotch tape over that foil and stick a hole in the foil. That's your pinhole. So what you'll do is you'll hold the cereal box, put the sun behind you. The pinhole is here and you just need to line it up with the sun. And then you're looking inside the cereal box at the screen. If you get everything lined up just right, you'll see a teeny tiny little eclipsed sun on the inside of the cereal box. So there you go. That's another cheap way of doing it. And you can test this out prior to the eclipse. You don't have to wait for an eclipse to try it. You can see a little image of the sun. It'll be tiny, um, but you'll see it. All right, solar glasses, solar viewers. Um, there's no difference between these except for shape. Um, 
the glasses are fine. The viewers, um, we gave out viewers to public libraries in Illinois, um, and I brought some for the for the library tonight too. We got these because they're much easier to store. Um, the area of the film is actually a little bit bigger, and uh, they promote sharing because <laughs> nobody ever has enough of these things. The other nice thing about the viewers rather than the glasses is if you wear glasses, it is much easier to hold these over your face than sometimes to put the glasses over your glasses. So that's that's why we have this shape instead of this shape. Um, but the the main point of this material is the, sh the silvery side faces the sun, the black side faces your face. All these work exactly the same. All right. Um, now, if you're using them in a regular room and you go, I don't see anything, that's the point. You shouldn't see anything through these except for really, 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 really bright lights. Like if you shine a really bright, bright, bright flashlight through it, you might see the flashlight through it, maybe just a, a dim image of it. Um, you should only see the sun and really bright lights through it. If you see easily see flashlights, you easily see any other lights, throw it out. It means it's defective, okay? When in doubt, throw it out. Also shine a light through, make sure there's no pinholes, rips, tears, folds, okay? You do not wanna mess with your eyes. So if you're not sure, if you're shining the light, you go, ooh, I see a little spot of light, throw it out, all right? You don't want that little pinhole projector putting a focused image of the sun on your eye, okay? Also, these have a hole on the lower corner. You could use that as a pinhole projector if you wanted to, or what it's really for is putting a piece of yarn <laughs> through and holding it around your neck, so. Um, okay, the other website, in case the library, well, when the library runs out of solar glasses, because it will happen, uh, if you're wondering where to get them, if you ever have to buy them, I recommend buying them very soon. They will run out. Um, Eclipse.aas.org, the American Astronomical Society Eclipse website. I want you to go to the eye safety section, okay? The menu on the second from the left, suppliers of safe solar viewers. Click that link. All right, this page will come up and I want you, oops, and I want you to scroll down and all of these are links to vetted, legit, safe solar glasses, manufacturers and vendors and suppliers. So what happened in 2017 was the market got flooded with counterfeits. What's happening in 2024? Counterfeits have already been on sale for two years. They've, they're already here. They've already been here. Do not purchase solar glasses on the giant third-party website whose name, be, whose name is the same as a big river in South America, right? Do not buy them um, because they can't vet them. They can't, anybody can say their stuff is legit. Anyone can say their stuff it meets the certification and all that. There's no third-party vetting. Well, this is. So the American Astronomical Society had an astronomer go through and check all the testing from all these companies and they are legit. Okay, so each one of those is a link and that'll take you to the web store where you can get this stuff. Don't just search the name online. Use these links directly, okay? Uh, because the manufacturer's names are counterfeit. The manufacturer's logos get counterfeit, counterfeited. Um, so yeah, just, just don't. <laughs> just use this list. That's the best advice I can give. Um, if you have a camera, a DSLR camera or a telescope that you want to get a solar filter for also, Thousand Oaks Optical in California has excellent uh, camera and telescope solar filters. You'll just need to get the right size and the right kind for the camera or telescope that you have. Um, and they have information on the site about how to choose which one it is, all right? Um, I always get asked about this. Hey, the solar glasses have run out. Can I get welding supply, uh, welder's glass? So the answer is yes, except, uh, first off, you're gonna pay a lot of money for it because it's not cheap. You can only get shades number 12, 13, or 14. Those are the only ones that are safe for looking at the sun. Um, one of them, and I don't remember which one, the sun will look green 
It's just the color of light that gets through the, the, the welder's glass. Number 13 is the one that you'll have the hardest time finding. It's just not a shade that's carried too often. The other problem is, besides paying a lot of money, don't get these online either because on the giant third party website whose name is a river in South America, um, there are counterfeit welders materials on that site as well. So get them directly from a welding supply store. Call them and make sure they have it uh, before you go because uh, they're going to run out too. So where the solar glass is, you might pay a couple bucks per welder's glass, you might pay $20 or more for a piece of welder's glass. Um, but it is safe as long as it's these shades as well. Okay. Good luck, everybody. I hope you all get to see it. Uh, for those at home, we've got uh, almost everybody in the crowd is going to be traveling to totality. So um, I would love to know if anyone has questions. So is it okay if I stop sharing my screen? Okay. And Cool. All right. So I see there's some stuff in the chat. I don't know if it's a question. So are there any questions? It's all comments so far. Okay. Um, any questions? And I'll relay questions to the folks uh, online as well. And those of you online, definitely, I keep looking here. Definitely uh, uh, get us your questions. So, question. Yes. So you're suggesting that even if you get barely into the totality, yes. it's the same as being in the middle of the totality. Yeah. Yes. So uh, is barely into the path of totality the same as being in the middle of the path of totality? Yes, except just the length of totality is different. The experience is the same, but the, the length of totality is different. So you can go anywhere in that path. Um, I, would just, I would just make sure, like if you're right at the edge, just go a few hundred feet, even, even a little farther in, <laughs> just to make sure that you're all the way in. All right. So, okay. Yes. I went to the planetarium's website. Yep. And there was offered a place to buy these glasses. I presume that is a place. Yes. Yes. So the glasses that the planetarium has for sale, they are legit. Yes. So our website had, yes, that is our store and that's, they're legit. We made sure that, uh, uh, we asked the company that runs our store, they all get them from the same location. So they have a vendor that they use. So yes, so they are not on that list, but um, our store has got the, the glasses for sale as well. Yeah. Um, the one thing about getting them from a place like our store versus one of the other online locations is a lot of those, you may have to get like a minimum of 20. Which, okay, get in with the neighbors and get a, get an order going if you want to, or you could go to our store and just get one if you want to. So that's that's possible. Um, I know that they had purchased our store had gotten a supply of seventeen thousand of them total, and they've been selling them for about a year. So I don't know how many more they have left. <laughs> so the closer we get to April 8th, the less of them we'll have for sure. So if they still have them on the website, then we still have them in, in stock. So any more questions? I'm looking. Yes, please. 14,000 crowd in Carbondale. Is there an advantage to being in the 14,000 crowd in Carbondale? Just being with a bunch of crazy eclipse people in a big crowd. Um, we're going to have a, a live uh, stadium show. It's going to go on for, I think it's about two and a half or three hours. So we're going to be trying to entertain people for that long. Um, periodically, we'll have live views from other locations. And then we're also one of the locations that NASA is going to take a live feed from for their eclipse broadcast. So NASA is going to have uh, eclipse feeds from all over the country. And so they're periodically going to check in at each location. So as totality gets to each one, they'll have camera views from each one as well. So, yes. And where do you get tickets for that? Uh, eclipse.siu.edu. Eclipse.siu.edu. Yes. This is an question, but I mean, this is an interesting observation. Many years ago, there was a, I was in an area that had partially eclipse. 
not total, but fairly extensive part of the track. And it was in a wooded area. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you go through the woods, you have the sun is peeking through and you can get some staff. Right. Around. Right. But then partially this was happening. All those results in the little crescents. Correct. Yes. So the observation is that uh, many years ago he was in, I keep looking at that, uh, many years ago he was in um, uh, a forested area during a partial, a pretty deep partial solar eclipse. And he was noticing that instead of all the little round images of the sun, it was the forest floor was covered in crescent eclipses. And that's exactly what happens. It's really cool. Um, yeah, that's the, that's the only drawback to being in a stadium of 14,000 people is uh, I won't get to see that. And because I'll be in a giant open space. <laughs> so I have to make my own little crescents with my hands. Um, but that would be so cool to see. That's what I was hoping it would be clear even for five minutes in October. I just wanted to see a partial eclipse. And to add insult to injury, I was driving home about two hours after the eclipse ended. That's when the sun came out. So, oh, well, that's okay. All right. Other questions online? No, we all good? All right. Oh, yes. <laughs> Access to food and bathrooms. Yes, wherever you go, wherever you go, wherever you end up, make sure that you have access to food and bathrooms. You could pull, lots of people pulled off in, in the path of totality. They went to like a McDonald's parking lot. They hung out there. They got, I'm not necessarily saying just McDonald's. You can go anywhere you want. Any restaurant, just go in, get some food there, use the bathroom. As long as you throw them some money, you're, you're hanging out in their parking lot. I don't think they'll mind. <laughs> so um, yeah, just uh, bring some water. Wherever you go, bring a paper map with you to navigate the back roads and try to stay off the expressways, the highways on the way back because the traffic is going to be insane again. Um, my sister left Carbondale in 2017 at 6 p.m. They made it to Champaign by one in the morning. It's normally less than a three hour drive. It was seven hours and they waited till 6 PM. Everyone else had gotten into the same traffic jam on the way home. Um, there were people who left Southern Illinois and got back to this area 14 hours later. It was that bad. So take a paper map, stay off the, off your cell phone because all the cell phone towers crash all along the expressways because people were all trying to get onto Google Maps to try to navigate off the highway and they couldn't because they couldn't get access to the maps. So get those atlases out that we all have stashed away in the closet in the junk drawer somewhere. So they'll come in really handy. So, all right, any other questions before we end for today? Y'all excited? Excellent, good luck. Hope everybody has a great time. Thanks a lot.